What we're gonna be doing today is polishing them with that. I'll go through the tools as I'm, as I'm using it. I've only used it once. I'll try and explain how to use it and, and what I've learned so far. Most of the time in my videos, I'll show them wet. What they really look like is this. They have all those scratches and stuff on there. And there's also some deeper saw grooves there. I did work on, on one side of the piece. That's not wet, you can see the shine on it. Ling! I want to get them all to that stage. Before I start polishing, I'm going to use the tile saw by rubbing the stone on the edge of the blade just to smooth down any more of those deep grooves left by the cutting. You always want to make sure that you use both sides of that blade as well. Now with some of these rocks, they've got different levels of porousness. Porosity? What that means is some of these are going to take a better polish than others. Look at the polishing. I've got the orbital sander. It's going to be set on two. The pads, you want to set them up, make sure you got them in the right order. So 50 first, then 100, 200, and 3000. This is where we start the lowest number first, which means it's the coarsest grit. You use these wet dip on the thing once it starts drying out dip it again. It might seem tedious. You can get water fed ones of these. I don't, I didn't. Oh, also a towel. You're gonna see that on my lap. It stops me from getting as wet. <laughs> so you wanna get this lined up nice and perfectly. Otherwise, it's gonna go all wobbly on you. Let's work on this guy. Yeah, let's do it. For anyone who's thinking about doing this themselves, I've left a list of all of the tools and accessories that I'm using in this video in the description below. Now it's really, really important between each stage that you check for any extra little scratches left over from the bigger stages. It's best to do that when it's dry too. Now these pads say they can be used wet or dry. I like to use them wet. It keeps the dust to a minimum. And it also keeps the stone and the pad from heating up, prolonging that life of that pad just a little bit more. You can see the dust on my arm. That's why you got this on. It's a good idea to move the stone around the pad, shifting how you're polishing it, just to allow the stone to get a more even polish. By tipping the machine, you're able to see that you're making good contact with each one of those small surfaces so that they're not getting rounded. The first pad, the 50 grit, is the one that takes the longest. It's the one where you're getting all the little nooks and crannies. It means that the next stages, all the way up to polishing, will go a lot smoother. There we go. That is the first grit done. That's taken about, about one hour. That's one stage. There's um, eight stages. <laughs> it's gonna be taking me a little while. But I mean, this isn't for one rock. I probably could have been almost finished one of these little ones, I reckon. Mm, maybe. It's good fun though. Alright, we are done for today. I have a couple things I gotta do. Oh gosh, look at that. Oh no, I got some cleaning up to do. Oh, it's all over my rocks. Right, one day down. Day two, let's get polishing. doing as I'm cycling through these rocks is as I finish one I place it up here to dry off so that before changing the grits I come back to it once it's dry you can actually see better where those scratches may be I just keep going over and over until I'm happy with it and I change the pads yeah, this one has a, a, a curved edge on it that was just to show best what's inside the stone but when you work in the curve you can see that do little circular motions following that curve. Now these Velcro diamond pads and the adapter can all be ordered on eBay for fairly cheap. I'll leave some details in the description. Okay, so we're at the 400 grit stage. 
and that's when you can start to see a bit of the shine coming. You can also see right there a bit that I left by accident from another round. I have to now go back and try and clean him off. Yum. Now we're getting to the stage where that polish is getting a lot shinier, the rock. You can see on the edges here, I must have been rolling it a little bit on the pad, so I have to be sure to continue that motion while I'm using it. Would you look at that? That's not even on the 3000 grit yet. Last one, and then onto the polish. I'm done with the polish pads. Now I'm going to take this off and put this on. Now for this, I'm gonna be using some tin oxide polishing stuff that I got from my tumbler. And this polishing pad for your car, I'll get that wet, sprinkle some on. I really don't know what I'm doing at this point. Now when I turn this on, it's gonna fly everywhere. Oh, yeah, it went everywhere. Still on there there, so. Hello Quentin, good part. I just feel like I'm making a mess. I don't know if it's doing anything. Ah. I think it's safe to say, I'm still a rookie. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, so it's shinier, but it has a lot of the powdery stuff in there. But I'm going to set these in water after so that this doesn't dry too much. Okay, almost done. Bling! But I just need to get the last of the compound off there, the polishing compound. I tried scrubbing, it didn't get much off, so I'm using this and got it right up against it and just like that. I guess the pressure is helping get into the little nooks and crannies of the calcedony, but it's it's a learning curve. Here we go, let's look at them. I've got gloves on, because of the shinies. That's so cool. This one's a little agate. Just cut into it to see what I could see in there. Oh man, it makes it look so cool. Love it. This guy, I'm real happy with how he turned out. It ended up taking a pretty good shine too. It's just beautiful. A bit of rhyolite. It took a better shine than what I thought. I just cut this to make an example of what we're finding out here. Look at that. Just stunning in there. This one, I was really surprised with how well the uh, the Rylite took a shine. It just as beautiful, and there's lines in there. I left the rough on there because I love that little bit right there. <laughs> there are little scratches left. I'm learning. The back of it's just beautiful. Look at that. So pretty. I think this one's probably one of my favorites of it because it can sit there and it has the example of the rough, the host stone and the jemmy carnelian in it. 
This is some same agate. Carnelian. Little tiny bands. I love how you can see right into it. And last but not least, this one. Look at the reflection of the clouds. That's so cool. It really turned out beautiful. There's little divots and stuff like that in there. That's just from the natural stone. I didn't have much to play with with it, but I'm happy. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm so happy with how that turned out. Go. Let me know in the comments if I've done anything wrong or I could be doing anything better or trying better. I hope that was helpful. All right. Bye. I'll see you next video. Thank you so much.